I'd like to give a brief introduction on Venerable Chandaratana, who are also referred to as Bhante. Um, so he is a deputy abbot of the Forest Monastery in Nisaranavaria in Mithrigala, Sri Lanka. Bhante is conversant in the Dhamma message and is well-known figure within our circles. He will regularly head up our intensive meditation retreats, do Dhamma discussions and also interviews with <laughs> mindfulness practitioners, especially when the chief abbot is unavailable. We think Bhante will be very good in a very good position to head up a forum like this and, uh, and I'm very thankful that he's given up his time to accommodate us. I'd like to pass on to Bhante to start the session. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Chatu. Uh, <clears throat> hope uh, everyone can hear me. Yes, everybody yes. can hear? Yes, we can hear you, Bhante. Okay, yeah. So to begin with, actually, uh, just, uh, before this discussion, uh, Suranga told that uh, we can emphasize on mindfulness and I just joked and why not uh, other subjects because uh, we are keep on telling Satya, 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 mindfulness, mindfulness. So I don't know whether others might feel uh, boring. <laughs> so I said uh, that uh, particularly in uh, Kalalgoda, you know that in Sri Lanka, we are conducting an English medium retreat in Kalalgoda once a month. They are we are actually, of course, we are giving uh, emphasis on mindfulness. But people are asking various questions, not only mindfulness, but various other questions. And uh, time to time, answering those questions also gives some change or gives some difference to the dialogue. And uh, that is also, in a way, uh, interesting because uh, it is not only mindfulness, but various other topics are there in Dhamma. But anyway, if we are oriented towards the uh, practice, definitely we have to take mindfulness in front. So, as Bhante Dhammaji mentioned, uh, quite often we have to emphasize mindfulness because otherwise we are giving prominence to various other topics, maybe concentration, maybe uh, various other rituals or various other mystic practices, practices or something like that. But mindfulness is in a way something very straightforward and uh, very clear. And uh, as Bhante has mentioned, uh, it is directing you to the uh, sort of uh, understanding, sort of uh, clarity of the mind. So that is in a way very useful because sometimes if we consider various other uh, practices, they may promise to give results in the future and sometimes uh, uh, promising various, some extraordinary results but mindfulness on the other hand is very much uh, verifiable which is i mean if you are practicing mindfulness there is it is not essential for you to come and ask from someone else whether i am doing it well or am i in the correct path because you yourself know that is why it is extremely verifiable and you know if you are if you are practicing well definitely you have to have some uh, verifiable results. It is not that you are predicting or if you are that is, you are not guessing. Rather, you can really feel it. You can really feel the change. You can really uh, feel the progress if you are doing it well. So, therefore, it is in a way uh, you yourself can uh, keep it as a testimony and keep it as a proven method and then you can continue. So with that, uh, I'll just uh, hand over to Surango, anyone, uh, just to uh, come up with uh, some idea or some sort of uh, question, because uh, right now I didn't select any particular topic uh, since today is the first session. In the long run, we can either select a topic or you all can suggest a topic, uh, or we can discuss in general if you have any other question, maybe related to your meditation, or if you have any other question related to the Dhamma, or your understanding of Dhamma, or if you have some doubts, we can answer those things as much as possible. So keep it, keep this forum as a kind of an open uh, discussion, <clears throat> so everyone can participate, and it is okay to uh, object even. If I am telling something, you can press your hand and you can give uh, either your consent or if you have any objections you can raise your hand and feel free to uh, uh, come up with your own ideas so keep it open so that we have a good dialogue uh, 
Bante, uh, maybe um, I will um, start the forum by asking the basic question. Of course, this is uh, on mindfulness. Um, in the uh, current uh, world context, uh, and especially in this uh, COVID situation, there is a big trend to look uh, inwards uh, and start a spiritual journey. But there are so many teachers, uh, even lay practitioners, showing different methods that uh, some say you need to have the uh, right view first. Some say that uh, the answer is in the scriptures and we should start studying them or listen to their sermons and look for profound insights. But uh, we hear all the time, uh, Bhante and from the Saranana, it's always about the practice. It's about the practice and mindfulness comes in the way. So um, we would like to know specifically why mindfulness and how this can take us through this journey that we are expecting. Yeah, so basically, I mean, just to give a brief idea. Now, if we are not mindful, basically, we are in a dream. Say, for example, if, when, when the mind is going through some sort of a uh, scenario, if you are thinking about the past, something happened in the past, or something going to happen in the future, you are dreaming about the future, you are fantasizing, uh, then all these things are not real. Those are either related to the past or to the future. So it is like a dream or it is like, it's like a cinema where it is not real. But on the other hand, when it's come to the mindfulness, that is where we are coming out of that dream and just to live at this very moment. So this is in a way very difficult to convince or very difficult to uh, uh, advertise at the beginning because this coming to this world or coming back to this very moment is not that uh, pleasurable as you are enjoying either in the past or the future. Say for example, you had a kind of a very nice experience in the couple of years ago. And even today, if you reflect it back, you might feel happy. And again, you might have a kind of a dream, kind of an ambition that you hope to fulfill in the future. And when you are thinking about it, when you are sort of proliferating about it, it is giving you some sort of a happiness. So therefore, we typically like to engage in that kind of a thinking. So therefore, Buddha very beautifully mentioned that uh, so basically my people are very interested in thinking in other ways in a kind of a proliferation in a kind of a daydreaming so either related to the future or either reflecting back about the past taking again and again the past memories and enjoying so this is very pressurable so we are in a way habitually and we are habituated to do like this. Now we have to cut through this uh, tendency and have to come to the very present moment. And in a way that is not that present, so not that interesting or not that pleasurable when you come to the present, present moment. Say for example, if we are coming to the very present moment, so we have a lot of questions. At the moment, the world is going through Corona, this uh, virus threat and various countries are locked down and people are losing their uh, revenues and they are losing their freedom and there are a lot of questions. So this is the present moment. So we don't like to just accept that present moment because it is very hard, it is not pleasant, it is not giving us uh, any kind of a pleasure. So what we do is we simply go back to our past pleasure, pleasurable moments and again and again we're thinking about it and dreaming about that. And again in the future we think, okay, we have gone through all these uh, problems and in the future we have a really beautiful bright future and I'm enjoying it so and so and likewise I am dreaming that's pressurable but on the other hand as I mentioned if we simply come back to the present moment sometimes it's not that pressurable so likewise there are uh, people who don't like to be in the present moment so we have to encourage them even though they are enjoying either in the past or future, it is not real. It is a really a kind of a dream. So they have to come out of this dream and to just be in this present moment. 
then only they have some sort of an understanding okay i am living now so this is the present moment it may be may not be sort of pleasurable but at the moment i am living i am at this very moment so that is kind of an awakening that is kind of a coming back, coming out of the dream and coming back to the real world so this is something extremely important when consider the mindfulness when consider the whole practice of the buddha so buddha deliberately mentioning say for example in the baddegaratta sutta atitan nan vagameya napadi kanke anagata yadatitam pahinam tham appat pancha anagata buddha very beautifully mention atitam nan vagameya don't follow the past don't go after the past and napadi kanke anagata and don't just dream about the future don't have so much of projections predictions about the future because yadatitam pahinam tham so the whatever the past it has gone it is finished and appat tancha nagatam the future hasn't come yet so very beautiful so it is very precisely very in a very briefly buddha mentioned the very uh, gist of the whole practice you have to let go of the past and you have to let go of the future and you have to just be in this very present moment so that is that is not because it is really pleasurable admirable and you giving the whole sort of happiness rather that is an awakening to the present moment without that just being in a dream you can't find solutions just being in a kind of a future fantasy you can't find a solution because it's a, it is not a real thing it is some some sort of mind made thing so therefore we have to come to this real thing to the reality rather than being in our own dream worlds <laughs> so that is the key thing that we are emphasizing so we all have to come back to this very moment and then then onwards actually the practice begins so that's why we are taking various methods various techniques to uh, bring our attention to the present moment and as a result once we establish our attention in the present moment then there is there are still lot of things ahead to do and then still i mean there are there is some sort of a, a path available when we we are awakened to this very moment so therefore i think suranga uh, that is why we are emphasizing mindfulness because one key thing in mindfulness is to come back to the very moment come back to this present moment so without that we can't uh, even define mindfulness okay bante um so we understand that the present moment is the uh, first thing that we have to do but uh, we also expect where is the uh, profound dhamma so let's say we come to the uh, present moment and we might have the expectation so uh, what am i going to realize where is the profound dhamma we used to uh, hear in uh, all the uh, sermons uh, how do we uh, go from their own words yeah so actually we have to start from somewhere where we are i mean we can't i mean yes. we can imagine so much things and uh, uh, we can think various various uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, theories and uh, uh, philosophies but all are still in the mind we haven't yet touched the water it is very much like say you are writing a thesis about swimming and various techniques various styles in swimming but you haven't even touched the water so there are many people like that so they know the suttas they know the philosophies they know various uh, traditions in the buddhism and they know various other religions so they in a way i mean they know a lot but if we if we come back to the present moment it is very straightforward so so once once we establish ourselves in this mindfulness and once we come back to this very moment so slowly slowly the dhamma becomes verifiable dhamma becomes practical pragmatic because it is not that so um, still it was in the book and others are telling and it's a kind of a challenge to us and it's a kind of a unseen thing un, not a practical thing for us but slowly slowly when we are uh, putting ourselves into the practice and when we are developing certain qualities in ourselves 
now dhamma becomes something verifiable something available for us it is no more with the book but it is within ourselves so likewise the deep teachings of the buddha it is true that the sort of the book knowledge is in a way giving some uh, benefit but still book knowledge has some limitations it is very much like as i said uh, um, uh, remaining in the surface of our mind rather going deeper so the practice on the other hand helping us to touch the deeper knowledges deeper insights and ultimately the book knowledge as well as our own practice when both are going hand in hand when both are telling each other then sort of a happiness arises that i am practicing the buddha's teaching which was said say 2600 years ago and it's, it is still available today it is not something past it is not obsolete rather still it is available today so it is in a way that is how we can enrich the dhamma we can enliven the dhamma rather than keeping it to the past thinking that buddha has already passed away and it is dhamma has already vanished or it has only only few uh, say points available it's the whole purpose is not uh, available for us likewise without telling such kind of grips instead of that we are practicing and slowly we are able to touch the practice we are able to touch the teaching rather than simply predicting or rather than sim- simply thinking about the teaching now say for example as uh, suranga mentioned so people are having various uh, predictions okay i have to go to this all philosophical uh, sides of the dhamma and maybe true but on the other hand if if we ourselves don't have those qualities inbuilt don't have those qualities uh, sort of developed within ourselves so then that knowledge is simply limited to the surface it is not really touch our heart we are not really changed because of the teaching so on the other hand if if one is practicing the dhamma so it is it is totally encompassing ourselves and totally absorbing ourselves to the dhamma and ultimately dhamma is the one meaning it is not a person so ultimately we are changing our whole self <laughs> to our our own personality okay? and ultimately the simply the dhamma is operating it is not that someone is winning or i as a person winning or so something like that rather the dhamma beautifully uh, cultivating within our minds so then the person becomes dhamma okay so nice Uh, can i ask a question uh, bante avasarai sure sure um so uh, first thing actually i don't know what sort of uh, uh, audience we have today if there's a fresh one here so could you explain uh, uh, what do you really mean by mindfulness and uh, what are the techniques we use uh, uh, in practice and also now you said uh, previously that uh, we can verify uh, dhamma through this mindfulness practice and uh, what are we really verifying and what what uh, um what sort of knowledge that we need to have uh, in order to practice this mindfulness and if you give a, a certain uh, uh, a very basic uh, instructions uh, to the audience i would, i think uh, it would be helpful yeah <clears throat> so actually to begin with Mm, I mean, lot of knowledge is not needed. So we think that we have to read so many books and we have to uh, have so much uh, morality and all these things. So those are not essential. So you you can start from where you are. So there are various paths available, not just one path. So that is that is in a way kind of an opening. That is where the dhamma is available for all of us as human beings. it doesn't have any cultural differences it doesn't care about any nationalities it doesn't care about the location so likewise there are no any such kind of a limitation when we are going into practice there may be differences when it comes to our sort of places or kind of a understanding where we are but as we get on to the practice slowly slowly we ultimately 
can come to a same understand that is why the buddha's teaching is applicable even today to all human beings you simply have to be a human just for practice so there are therefore there is no any kind of a rigid criteria for you to practice so as a prerequisite there is no such thing anyone can start practicing you simply have to honestly practice and it is not to simply to show off someone else that i am more so meditator or i am i know dhammo something like that it is not that kind of an attitude but rather with a very uh, sort of a true true to the type and very honest kind of an approach if someone is getting get on to the practice then the results are available now you asked how to verify so i'll just uh, give a brief example say for example you are starting with walking meditation so at the beginning suppose you are going to a walking path and now you are simply <clears throat> practicing to uh, mindfulness say for example you are keeping your left foot on left foot on the ground now you are aware now oh, i have some sensation on the left foot and then your right foot on the ground now you are aware now i have some sensation on the right foot just to facilitate this whole process we may be sort of doing the labeling as left right left right so this is a, this is some sort of a technique simply to employ uh, uh, to strengthen the practice because at the beginning our minds is so jumpy so it is very difficult to keep our attention on this very straightforward process but as a result of practice suppose at the beginning even though you couldn't establish mindfulness for five steps now as a result of practice now you may be able to establish your mindfulness for 10 steps now this is something verifiable you don't need to go and ask from the teacher whether i whether my mindfulness has improved because of this practice instead you yourself should understand okay when i start my practice i had i was able to only establish mindfulness only for five steps then my mind distracted i couldn't uh, keep my attention on the steps for several minutes but now as a result of practice now i can continue my my attention for 10 steps for many many minutes when compared to the previous situation previous situation so it is verifiable now you yourself know because of this straightforward very clear kind of a technique i am able to develop mindfulness i am able to maintain attention where it is necessary so typically our mind is uh, taking us for a ride and uh, we seem to become a slave but on the other hand now we are trying to uh, maintain our attention where we need it is not the mind is trying to dictate us actually that it is not the defilements in the mind dictate us what to do rather we are now trying to dictate the mind to where it has to be located right it has to be positioned so we are now taking the control to our hand so this is a big difference slowly slowly what we have to do is to train the mind so that the whole control whole sort of the domain come to our hand so that we can properly educate the mind otherwise what happens is we have some already available some habitual tendencies and we simply become a victim of that so therefore the mindfulness is verifiable in the sense as you develop mindfulness you should be able to understand okay i had i was there say a couple of weeks ago this is this was the level of my mindfulness but now as a result of this techniques what i have used now i have grown now i can employ mindfulness for 10 uh, steps now i can just maintain mindfulness for 10 minutes so likewise the improvements are verifiable yes thank you bhante we have someone with the raised hand so i'll put them on the spotlight they can ask the question <clears throat> Buti from Melbourne. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, with regards to the um, uh, mindfulness, there's uh, the two kinds in terms of concentration and uh, insight. Um, 
do you need the concentration first to before you can uh, progress in insight uh, meditation? Yeah, actually there are various approaches available. If I simply give you some uh, direct information from the suttas, so there are four methods, four uh, methodologies Buddha has mentioned. One is that uh, you are keeping the concentration front and then uh, progress towards the insight. So that is one approach. And another approach is you first develop insight and then as you go on, develop concentration. That is another approach. And there's another approach where you are keeping both hand in hand. Concentration as well as uh, insight, you are keeping hand in hand. So that is another approach. And there's a last approach called where you are, you are reflecting about the Dhamma you are trying to, uh, sort of uh, eliminate whatever the restlessness came through because of too much uh, uh, reflections. So that is another approach that is not much uh, emphasized anyway. So this the first three are sort of approaches commonly available. So therefore, uh, I can't simply say, I mean, uh, concentration is uh, essential for you to go to insight or it is not essential to go to insight. It depends on the person because there are people who have some concentration already available with them. Say for example, if you consider certain students so they, they have some already available concentration with them. Say when they are reading a book, even someone is coming and telling something, they, they can't uh, really hear because they are somewhat absorbed to this reading. Whatever the task at their hand, they are wholeheartedly doing. So in a way, I mean, I can't say this is the real concentration is necessary. <laughs> Likewise, there are certain characters, they have some inherent qualities somewhat towards the concentration on such situation if we introduce mindfulness probably if you uh, easily they can continue to insight meditation as well on the other hand there are other cases where people are extremely their minds are extremely distracting extremely uh, diverse and they can't maintain their attention on one particular subject for even a minute so likewise extremely ex scattered minds on such situation, it is very difficult for them to immediately go into insight. So they have to develop fair amount of concentration. So therefore, it is. It depends on the situation, depends on the case. We need to understand whether mind mind already have inbuilt concentration or is it very scattered. If you really honestly understand, my mind can't uh, stay on one object or stay on one particular subject for a a fair amount of time that indicates some concentration has to be developed. You have to you have to pump some concentration through various other practices. Then once you reach some amount of concentration, then you can start practicing insight. So therefore, it depends. It depends on the scenario, and uh, you can't say a hard and fast rule, yes or no. Bante. Um... Uh, in simple terms, uh, how do we uh, distinguish that, okay, I am having uh, now concentration or oh, I am having uh, mindfulness, what is the best way to differentiate and then do we need to mix and balance these two or how do we find uh, this, uh, what is concentration, what is mindfulness and then what is a mix that we want? Yeah, so actually... Uh, typically, if you consider mindfulness, concentration, effort, uh, say faith, wisdom, all these are actually different spiritual qualities that we are trying to develop. So most of the time nowadays, it is not inbuilt. So we have, I mean, because of the present day situations, because of our present education system, because of the uh, sort of uh, money-minded uh, sort of economy and all these things. So typically these spiritual qualities are not given much value. So therefore today, today's generation in a way we have to purposely develop these qualities. And uh, 
result without uh, preparing the proper courses. So therefore, practicing mindfulness will lead to develop concentration. So, so therefore, I have to say, first, the approach is to develop mindfulness. As a result of develop mindfulness, one may be able to gain concentration. And once fair amount of concentration is established, you can you make use of that available concentration to develop insight. So that is the typical approach that we are taking. So Bhante says that uh, once we take the very uh, basic step of uh, developing uh, mindfulness, it will naturally get us into developing concentration. And yes. in turn, we can use this concentration to go more deep into ourselves and see, uh, get some more experience into mindfulness and it will go on like that on top of each other. Yeah, fairly like that because now we are talking about mindfulness, we are talking about concentration and all these things, but still we haven't experienced that. Say for example, if you are a, a, a just a newcomer, you might have kind of a book knowledge. You might have heard a, a news or you might have went through some articles or someone else has given a Dhamma sermon and likewise. You simply have all these terms but you haven't recognized these things by yourself. It's not, you are not experienced in these qualities. You, I mean, someone can give a definition about mindfulness. Someone can give a definition about concentration. It does not mean you really have it. You really experience it. So you really know it. So that the, the book knowledge is, the book knowledge is one thing, but the real understanding of each of these qualities is, yet another thing that we need to clearly understand. So that is where Buddha is mentioning. So these qualities are in a way have some sort of a progressive path. So recognizing mindfulness, recognizing, okay, this is the real mindfulness, what we call as sati, the mindfulness. Oh, this is the concentration. Okay, this is now I am experienced. Okay, this is the concentration. So likewise, to our own understanding, uh, this uh, experience to come, it may take some time. So that is where the Buddha is mentioning. So there's a kind of progressive criterion, progressive uh, path in these faculties, in these uh, spiritual qualities. At the beginning, you may be in one level. At that time, you don't know I mean, really what is mindfulness. You, know, you don't know what is really concentration. You may have, of course, the book knowledge, but you haven't yet touched that. You haven't yet experienced that. But on the other hand, using various techniques when you are practicing it, you are continuing it, slowly, slowly, you will feel it. Okay, oh, this is the mindfulness. Now, it is not that a book knowledge. It is not some borrowed knowledge. Rather, you yourself know it. You yourself experience it. Okay, this is the mindfulness. So it's kind of a, it becomes a kind of an inherent quality in yourself. Okay, now as a result of develop mindfulness, as suppose now you are able to uh, maintain that mindfulness for, say for example, you are practicing on walking meditation from this end to the other end, from that end to the this end. So likewise, for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you are able to continue your attention. So as a result, now you might understand, okay, mind is less distracted. It's not going to various other topics. Rather now mind itself, is staying with me, staying with where I want. So now there is a tendency that you are recognizing, okay, there is something called concentration. When I'm introducing some particular domain, some particular selected sort of objects, mind itself is staying on those objects. Now slowly, slowly you will understand, okay, there's a, some sort of a quality in the mind where you can maintain your attention continuously for a considerable period of time. Now you are recognizing some quality called concentration. Mm. So these are some qualities that you need to feel. Mm. You need to experience. Mm. So then you are recognizing, okay, this is mindfulness. This is concentration. Now you can distinguish between these two. So likewise, we have to practically use various methods to taste these things, taste these qualities. 
and then only you will understand okay this is mindfulness this is concentration i have now mindfulness say about 20 minutes after that i couldn't maintain mindfulness now you can tell like that because you know when you are not mindful you can even now understand i was not mindful at that time you can clearly understand that and another time you can clearly understand okay i was very mindful at that time because now you recognize that quality kind of a mental quality that you have recognized on the other hand probably one might can tell okay i was able to maintain my attention on a particular object say for example breath so say 200 consecutive breaths i was able to simply observe one one after the other as a series of breaths without much distraction i was able to maintain my attention on series of breaths so now you are feeling the concentration now we are sort of testing the 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 kind of essence or the sort of taste of concentration when you are able to maintain your attention on series of breaths so likewise these uh, different qualities now becomes available to yourself is no more someone else's borrowed knowledge rather it is something available for you you can simply verify that you can simply taste that you can tell okay i was able to maintain my attention say 20 minutes 10 minutes likewise so likewise this becomes something verifiable something available Uh, just another question bante how sir i now um i've seen uh, many people have started practicing mindfulness but not many people uh, practicing regularly mm. and uh, not many people you know keep continuing uh, practicing so can you give sort of advice uh, to a to a fresh one in terms of keeping the interest for a long time um how do we keep our interest uh, to 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 the practice <clears throat> yeah i mean uh, that actually depends on uh, where we give priorities now say for example you have different other priorities say if you are if you are now building your house and uh, at the same time you are trying to meditate at the same time you are develop trying to uh, develop mindfulness where are you going to give priority is it to build your house or to practice so it's kind of a very practical question yeah. on the other hand suppose now you are say losing the job now you know because of this corona threat now people are losing their jobs and now you need to find a new job at the same time suppose you are trying to develop mindfulness so where are you going to give priority so likewise on the other hand suppose in young age so people are trying to find a new career they are engaged in education and all these other uh, priorities are there at the same time mindfulness is another subject so on on such situation people are not much giving priority to the mindfulness so they give priority to various other things they may be giving priority to earn money they may be giving priority to uh, get a promotion in their job they may be finding a different job they may be giving priority to the education so different they have different different motivations different different uh, uh, ambitions so they are giving priority to that because it has some sort of a uh, uh, what you call tempting attitude yeah when you are thinking about something in the future okay i want to achieve something so it has some sort of a attraction towards that goal but on the other hand when you come to developing mindfulness at the beginning you don't have that kind of a extremely say uh, beautiful attraction because what you are feeling is something very normal something very simple suppose when you are say for example if if, if you are simply telling okay i have spent half an hour looking at my breath is it really interesting news or simply a kind of a boring news 
It's a boring news. Yeah. <laughs> extremely boring. <laughs> it's extremely boring news. <laughs> so I mean, you 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 can't simply put that advertisement in the newspaper. Okay, I sat on Saturday on twenty minutes. I have observed hundred and twenty breaths. So it is. It, it does not. People are not appreciating such news. So but but I think it it is not exciting. it is not uh, making any kind of excitement it is not making any kind of enjoyment because it's a kind of a boring thing so because our 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 minds are always going after this pleasure principle mm. all are always going after something to show off okay i i have achieved this i am the i am the guy i am the boss so likewise i mean we are going after that kind of a mentality but on the other hand mindfulness is really grounding ourselves to take it to the ground rather than being on the heaven or rather than being on the moon rather you simply grounding yourself okay at the moment i am simply sitting at the moment i am simply hearing at the moment i am talking i am i am listening at the moment i can simply hear so likewise it is coming back to the very moment coming back to yourself coming back to your body coming back to this very moment so it is something earning therefore people actually on the other hand if if you consider now i just simply give you a beautiful example now you know in sri lanka nowadays the curfew now when government uh, tell okay tomorrow from tomorrow uh, say 7 am we are going to withdraw curfew you know where people going immediately especially the males where are they going immediately To the is it to their office or where? There are there is a long queue in the bar. <laughs> the bar. You <Yeah>. heard that? <laughs> there's a long queue. Still, the bar is not open, but the, there's a long queue. Now, this is this is where they are. They are where they are giving the priority because they want to. They want to simply go out of this world. They want to come. They 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 want to. out of the reality rather than they want to be a dream just to be in the dream rather than coming to the reality rather than coming to this whole this very moment coming to the present so therefore it's kind of a in a way kind of a pathetic situation yeah we are always trying to uh, so sort of escape from the present moment escape from the ground and always trying to live in the moon not in the <laughs> not on the earth so that is that is the kind of trend in ourselves so therefore just to give a brief example so people therefore it's very difficult to motivate okay keep continuing keep practicing it's it's giving you some results so like it's very difficult to motivate very difficult to advertise the mindfulness because sometimes in a way at the beginning it appears very like, like very boring and again it does not give immediate results and again uh, does not give much pleasure at the beginning because mind is not hearing what we order what we expect it is going here and there that is in a way very challenging at the beginning so simply therefore even though 100 people start practicing only very few might be continuing so it's a kind of a challenge at the beginning so you need lot of uh, encouragement at the beginning and uh, say lot of convincing at the beginning and again of course like right now what we are doing we need some sort of colleagues lot of uh, kalyana mitras to encourage okay you need to continue even though the results are not visible immediately you need to you need to continue this practice so likewise we have to always encourage ourselves to come back to the present moment come back to the earth and then start practicing we need to have certain certain uh, certain attitudes or certain lifestyle or lifestyle or <laughs> what do you call a, a moral uh, practice or something like that is it helps or there are different approaches aruna there are also where i mean uh, if if we simply tell okay you don't need any kind of morality you can immediately jump on to mindfulness that is also one approach because the as you develop mindfulness slowly slowly it will branching out to the clear comprehension sampajanya so as a result once you develop clear comprehension such sampajanya it 
paves the way to uh, this uh, morality. So that is another path available. On the other hand, uh, if you are already available in uh, establishing morality, and if you want to develop uh, mindfulness, that is also available. So that is the typical approach. Sira Samadhi Panya. That is another approach available. So therefore, it, so it is. We can't simply say one uh, no. There are many approaches available. Mm. That's why I mentioned at the beginning. So there is no any kind of a, a predefined criterion. Okay, these are the criterion you need in order to start mindfulness. In order to start developing mindfulness, rather than many approaches are available, you can simply develop from where you are. I think uh, Buddhi has a question. I will put him on. Hello, I just wanted to say, with regards the uh, the motivation for um, uh, trying to uh, develop mindfulness, I think certainly for me, I'm not sure about everyone else. Um, quite often, is it uh, usually to develop uh, better, um, you know, whether it's in business or work or you know study just being more um, being able to focus more on um, a certain thing do you find that's why certain people like a lot of people initially uh, try to develop mindfulness to you know get better focus on in other aspects of their life yeah actually that is also available because as you develop mindfulness, so this focusing ability, the concentration ability, all these are actually side benefits that you are getting. So therefore, that is how you can uh, use this for education, for children, uh, even the professionals to maintain some very focused attention on their job, on their task in hand. So these are other benefits available in mindfulness. So these are the benefits that we can uh, use for marketing. <laughs> because I mean, the immediate, the, the benefits that the mention is not, is in a way a bit difficult to use for marketing, but there are other benefits, which is of course available through mindfulness. One can use today for marketing. That's why now people are using mindfulness for say business management, maybe uh, sort of uh, family, uh, cohesiveness, uh, kind of family uh, he health, uh, maybe having good relationships, uh, maybe having sort of a social bonding and all these things are sort of other benefits uh, probably available for mindfulness. But these are actually, these are the ones nowadays the Western uh, sciences and the Western people are using to encourage mindfulness. But the Buddha is taking us to a more far deeper benefits, far more uh, approach or far more advantages than these uh, sort of, uh, uh, what to say, mm, small benefits or some low benefits. One can encourage telling, okay, you come to develop this mindfulness and definitely you can develop concentration, you can develop focusing at ability so that you get higher marks, you get higher uh, sort of uh, accuracy in your task. So likewise, we can uh, promote practice. Yeah, because I think initially, um, you know, a lot of people initially, they might not see the benefits of um, getting into mindfulness initially, but if they can see it through that perspective, you know, it can help them in this area or that area. And then once they get in into it, then, um, you know, they can get the benefits of, you know, what the Buddha originally um, uh, preached. Yes, true, true. I agree. Yes. Yeah. Um, Bhante, um, I was thinking um, sometime back uh, in a bit uh, similar manner, but in a more extreme uh, than what Buddha was saying that, okay, what if I go along with my thinking mind? Like, why should I do uh, mindfulness practice or any sort of practice? Um, I go ahead with the thinking mind and indulgence and just um, go with the um, 
whatever i do but then soon uh, when i try to do that one thing i realize is that uh, you can't uh, get along with that as well see what has happened uh, with the situation in february we were so jubilant and then we thought we are invincible and everything is sorted and within a month everything turned upside down and then comes all the anxiety or the problems and all the stuff how much uh, we were confident about ourselves so that is what i have seen uh, most of the time that we tend to think otherwise but then the the natural thing within us the uh, impermanence and all this stuff come into play and then we try to find again uh, the uh, spiritual path so that is some uh, experience from my end about uh, going after the um, the normal things and then uh, not seeing through what the benefits are yeah i agree with you suranga because uh, the these are in a way sort of understanding uh, or sort of a maturity that coming with the uh, sort of a long development mindfulness thus that kind of an understanding that kind of a maturity might not be coming immediately so but ultimately this is where the insights are taking us so because when the world is concerned everyone actually have to go through ups and downs of their life so slowly slowly mindfulness practice therefore will lead us towards this kind of a wisdom so but we have to start from somewhere so that is the sort of bear attention or the uh, the very basic kind of mindfulness so but it does not say that we have to just stay there or just to stagnate there rather we have to develop we have to start from there and then uh, branching out we have to further progress so ultimately we will be having necessary amount of concentration and it may lead to sort of an understanding you can observe various phenomena the reality of things and it will lead to this kind of a sort of a profound understanding so that kind of profound understanding help us to withstand any kind of ups and downs in our lives so that is that is in a way the deeper understanding or deeper benefits of the buddha's teaching so that is where buddha telling that the arahant is kind of a tadi where he he can he can maintain without fluctuation now when things are coming favorable he is not going to sort of elation when things are failing he is not going to depression rather he can maintain his mind in a very equanimous state so that is a kind of a very kind of a spiritual maturity so this kind of mature mature maturity actually coming with time you can't say immediately once you start mindfulness you have all these benefits rather as you develop slowly slowly as you get on get on especially to the wisdom development so these kind of aspects start to come with you come towards you i might ask a question about that um at this time with all the restrictions uh in place by governments all around the world people are finding themselves stuck at home and unable to do the things that they normally do um and there are many who are facing something that they never had to deal with and that's boredom and as you said before there was people lining up for alcohol so nothing else to do um but there are other people um many of who are mindfulness practitioners who are dealing with boredom very well and you could say in some instances even um like boredom can you give some explanation to mindfulness in regard to boredom <laughs> that's why i mean that's why people are leaving mindfulness <laughs> because mindfulness itself is uh, boring <laughs> at the beginning because say for example if we, if when someone is asking you to just keep your attention on left foot right foot left foot right foot is it interesting no <laughs> it's extremely boring so people simply ask what is this i mean did i come to nisarnavane to all this long time all this long journey just to keep my attention on left foot right foot what is this nonsense <laughs> so people simply complain like this so that is why i mean so uh, we had to use various techniques to encourage people because it is because that's why i mean we are like uh, torturing ourselves we we like this torture 
rather than simply allowing the wound to settle allowing the, our minds to settle we always uh, exciting our mind now now if i ask you to ask yourself uh, what kind of movie would you like to see suppose a uh, one hour monkey is simply meditating that's all the whole movie there's just no eyes open he is simply <laughs> maintaining lotus posture whole one hour a monkey is meditating that is one movie and there's another movie whole gun fires and all these things alien attacks a uh, <laughs> lot of noise lot of action packed movie that is another movie and another movie with lot of sex and all these dirty things so which one the typical mind would attract uh it's <laughs> all of the above except the guy sitting there doing mindfulness <laughs> <For sure. laughs> so no one will go to that monk meditating movie is extremely yeah. good so that is the typical selection of our mind our minds we always want to torture the mind you are you are not you are not healing the mind instead you are constantly you are agitating the mind so there's a very beautiful research actually done by uh, i think harvard university <clears throat> so they have uh, taken a group of uh, people say about 15 people and uh, they put it onto a kind of a cell like environment and there is a electric shock available in that cell suppose there's a room and there are there's a little shock available say if you want to if you simply touch a particular probe it will give a little electric pulse it has some jerk on the other hand you simply can be just without without getting electrocuted and people were asked to stay there 15 minutes what do you think uh oh, people press the button that's the point yeah so now some when people feel boring so even though it is hurting they go and touch that probe they know it is really sort of uh, making me sort of hurtful and it makes me little injured or and all these things but still they go and hurt themselves so that is the kind of attitude we have they they, they simply can't just be if they know that there's a kind of a hurting situation is there they go and they, they go and get hurt they ask themselves so that is the kind of attitude we have so what do you think this is this is kind of a kind of a crazy situation we are we like hurting ourselves rather than healing ourselves this is a kind of a uh, sort of a, this research done by harvard university as far as i can remember so they have put uh, <clears throat> many people onto that room they say okay i mean till 12 minutes they were waiting 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 so they found nothing is there there is nothing to enjoy no movies no music just that electric pulse available <laughs> and they only bear that boredom for 10 minutes and then they go and hit the button so they get electrocuted of course they didn't die they had simply a small shock but they like that so that is the kind of human mind the typically programmed we we are we we like we like that kind of a excitement rather than simply healing ourselves so that is where the mindfulness help us to understand these uh, harmful trends in our minds this is something we need to understand so i mean these these are in a way very uh i opening uh information to ourselves so these are sort of trends extremely harmful to ourselves and if we recognize these trends then we can cure ourselves we can heal ourselves otherwise simply we are going after the pressure principle simply hurting ourselves simply uh, promoting the inbuilt uh, harmful tendencies harmful habits i will simply circulate in the whole sansara so that is the typical approach thank you ante um look we might put the forum open to everyone um i just put one last question um so do you, would you think mindfulness could offer a solution for boring or boredom in some aspect so <clears throat> sorry actually uh, directly asking your question uh, chatu uh, so slowly 
as you develop mindfulness you are you are able to end your boredom so slowly you will understand so this is the nature i mean i don't need to excite the mind i don't need to hurt the mind rather i can allow things to be if mind can simply stay on breath so slowly slowly you will understand okay now there is a in breath now there is an out breath now there is a in breath now there is an out breath so what appeared like boring started slowly to give you happiness what what was boring at the beginning slowly slowly started to sprout sort of a happiness so this is this is a very subtle happiness and that is available it may not be available at the beginning so at the beginning at the beginning watching the breath may be extremely boring but slowly slowly as your hindrances uh, subside then watching the breath becomes one of the beautiful experiences in your life that each breath brings you some happiness and that is the kind of a opening kind of an eye opening in your spiritual life thank you bhante um if anyone has any other questions please um raise your hand sinhana jas akhodin a me vimukta as poddak mata minna meka in karala um uh if if just uh, checking with you guys if you know how to raise the hand so there's the option near the participation participant please so if you go to your name and you right click on it yeah, on your name then uh, you have the option to uh, raise hand yes all right but he has a question i'll put him back on I know it's the first session. I'm not sure how deep uh, we can go into it, but I just wanted to ask a question with regards to um, actual mindfulness. When we are observing, uh, you know, I've read that, um, you know, how there's. Uh, you know mind and matter so nama and rupa so are we observe, when we observe the in breath out breath are we observing the in breath and the out breath or are we observing the mind knowing the in breath and then the next moment the mind knowing the out breath um because yeah yeah actually uh at the beginning you can't say we are observing nama roopa and we are coming to that kind of a knowledge at the beginning actually we have to work what work with the what you call the uh, uh kind of a common common knowledge sort of sankalpa uh, uh, what you call the conventional level you have to work with so the in breath out breath Uh, rising falling left foot right foot all these are in a way still on the conventional level that is where we start that is where we uh, sort of get on to the practice but later slowly as a result of developing practice so we will penetrate that and we will uh, go through this uh, conventional level and slowly get on to the more subtle level more primordial level and that is where you can typically say we are really experience the elements that is the heat element the earth element the water element and the air element so likewise you know the buddha has mentioned as his teaching the four elements so that is where uh, one may be able to recognize or understand different different elements so at that time you can say okay the understanding so this knowledge happen at the mind level and the what we are experiencing that is the object is that is the rupa level so that so there you can distinct okay this is the rupa this is the nama rupa are the ones this heat element 
the characteristics of heat, characteristics of earth, characteristics of uh, air, characteristics of water. So that is where the Rupa and the, what is knowing all these characteristics is the Nama. So therefore immediately if you simply say, okay, when I'm to tell like that but later as you get on all these things are sort of uh, becoming uh, fairly refined and you are uh, go beyond the conventional level and you are now coming to the reality so at that time you can say now the Nama knows the Rupa Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there any more questions? Um, if you don't know how to raise your hands, it should be on the, the right. There's a button called raise your hand. Chatu, why, did you, Chatu, why did you start oh. wearing a <laughs> beard? <laughs> uh, nobody's going to see me, but anyway, <laughs> it's happened. Uh, because I'm at home for work, so that's why I decided to grow a beard. Because <laughs> nowadays in Sri Lanka, you know, barber salons are closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are a little bit uh, beardy these days, sorry, no, just... <laughs> it, it, I, I gave myself a haircut, it was very easy, just cut all of it off. Um, uh -huh. Because yeah, here the, the salons are all closed as well. Right, right. <laughs> So everything now we have to make home at home. So yeah. exactly right. So Bante, uh, can I ask another question? Uh, if uh, there's no one uh, to ask questions, I've just asked. I just want to ask you. Uh, now, I've seen this uh, in in books. Uh, there's something called Mitcha Sati. Um, can mindfulness go wrong uh, or, or the way we practice? Can it go wrong in, in somehow? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, there's a very clear mentioning in the Salleka Sutta. If you consider Salleka Sutta is available in Majjimini Kaya. The Buddha mentioned Pare Micha Sati. So, I mean, that means the others are practicing uh, wrong mindfulness let us practice correct mindfulness. So that's a, that kind of a statement in this Saldeka Sutta. So as far as I can understand, so when you have real mindfulness or correct mindfulness, slowly, slowly it will uh, hand in hand with the comprehension, that is the Sampajanya, and it will lead to uh, Hiriyottap, that is the moral shame and moral fear. And it doesn't stop there. It will further get on to the sealer, that is the morality. So therefore, with the correct mindfulness, so there is a kind of a tendency, there is a kind of progressive result available for us that is we are, we are developing some sort of a moral, moral shame and moral fear. And it will lead to morality, basically. That is the sealer. So, on the other hand, if someone has already established themselves on sila, morality, and then when they are practicing mindfulness, then there's a kind of a guarding happens with the sila. Therefore, they can practice mindfulness, which is beneficial for themselves and beneficial for other, other selves. So, therefore, this moral aspect is the kind of a steering, uh, it is playing kind of a steering role in developing mindfulness. Say, for example, uh, if one is developing mindfulness to steal, they, how, I, how someone can steal without uh, giving any kind of a, a sign for the, the owners. So this is, I mean, this also needs a fair amount of skill. Say, some, a thief going to a house and without making any noise, is opening the door and maybe without go, uh, making any noise going
it does not have the steering or the real guidance coming through the uh, morality so that is where we have to say so this mindfulness even if you start with pure mindfulness or kind of bare attention bare mindfulness it will slowly have to couple with the comprehension so to couple with the sampajanya then sati sampajanya will slowly bring you uh, hiriyottap will bring you this uh, moral shame and moral fear and it will further develop into the morality the seela and on the other hand if you are already established yourself in uh, seela then of course you have the proper guidance proper steering and therefore you are developing mindfulness for the benefit of yourself and to the benefit of others so therefore i feel so there are maybe mindfulness available for immo sort of a um, immoral activities as well so that we can safely tell micha sati wrong mindfulness on the other hand what buddha advocates what buddha recommends is some sort of a mindfulness that is going hand in hand or get coupled with or get uh, enhanced or sort of uh, guided with morality so what do you think yeah. what do you think varuna uh, i think i, I got uh, your message so you said uh, um sati should be coupled with sampajanya yes. so which means what i get is now sampajanya is uh, it, it's part of uh, what do you call prajna isn't it uh, yes. the wisdom or the, the view seed, seed of prajna i mean you can't immediately say clear comprehension is the wisdom rather it is the is the beginning of wisdom yeah so you you basically should have that that attitude or that right view uh uh in in coupled with your practice so that's how uh, you can verify that it's going on a on a right path rather than uh, micha sati is, is that right bante uh, no actually if if you are developing mindfulness it has to slowly couple with comprehension say for example because simply mindfulness uh, at the beginning bring you to the present moment so once it is bringing you to the present moment then slowly you have to sort of ignite the attitude of searching the things what is going on at the moment you are now exploring what is really going on now you are introducing this investigation to the present moment what is really happening to the uh, phenomena at my hand now you have you are now focusing your attention to one sort of some sort of phenomena now you are introducing that kind of investigating quality to this mindfulness so that is the beginning of clear comprehension where you can recognize okay these are the different different components available it is not just a one unit it mean it has so many other branches branches it has so many other components it is not just a one unit so likewise now you are introducing this clearly knowing clearly understanding so this is the seed of comprehension so is it Any, sorry yeah. bande that yeah. happens automatically or do you have to put an effort to 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 do, to do that so i so, think we may have to do little uh, kind of a triggering because otherwise our minds might like to simply stay on the surface it may be on the present moment but it does not penetrate it does it does not go and uh, sort of clearly know the things it simply stay on the on the surface level because it is because you know clear investigation needs little effort you yes. you need to clearly clearly look at it what's really going on so that kind of a curiosity that kind of a investigating attitude has to be introduced to the practice yes thank you bante yeah. uh, bante what i uh, gathered from uh, aruna's uh, um question and your answer is that uh, when we start initially that uh, we can be mindful on a repeatable object like our breath or the walking uh, left and right how the sensations but then uh, later on once we are able to uh, establish that as a bit of a solid practice then these things start coming automatically and then we need to get on to the next stage 
So for the time being, it's just enough to observe a repeatable uh, observation. Is that a correct assumption? No, actually, actually, Suranga, in the Buddha's teaching, so Buddha very beautifully introduced this clear comprehension to the practice. For example, if you consider uh, breathing meditation, Anapanasati, at the beginning, he simply starts with bare attention. Sato vasa sati, sato pasa sati. Mindfully yeah. you inhale, mindfully you exhale. So that is very, very easy in a way. You come to the present moment. You are yes. not in the past, not in the future. But right now I am inhaling. Right now exhaling. Right now I am experiencing inhale. Right now experiencing exhale. That's it. There is no much yeah. detail there. But Buddha does not stop there. Buddha now introducing, okay, now yogi has to recognize, is this inhale longer compared to the previous inhale? Mm. Is it shorter when compared to the previous inhale, compared to the previous exhale? So these are kind of a distinguishing. Now mm. you are introducing this uh, sort of a curiosity, kind of an investigation attitude to the, to the, um, the practitioner. Mm. So that is, that is, that is fair. I mean, very beautifully Buddha is in sort of incorporating this clear comprehension to the practice. Then not only that, then Buddha is taking us to the clearly knowing the beginning, the middle, the end of the breath. Okay. In, it is true. It is in breath, but you should know, okay, whether it is the beginning of the in breath or whether it is the middle of the in breath or whether it is the end of the in breath. And maybe there's a, still a little gap available in just before the outbreath. And this is the beginning of the outbreath. This is the middle of the outbreath. This is the end of the outbreath. And there's a little gap before the beginning of the inbreath. So likewise, Buddha is introducing this curiosity, sort of investigation towards the practice. Now, slowly, this Sati and Sampajanya starts to go hand in hand. Svante, I'll ask a question. Um, so there's some people, I guess, who are at home and they have some time and then maybe they want to start mindfulness meditation. Um, without a teacher um, and with limited resources, I guess, available um, to some extent, how, how should they get started if they're interested in this? So I, I mainly like to tell, uh, rather than taking the whole practice as a kind of a burden, or as another thing to do, rather try to enjoy it. Because it is not that uh, mindfulness practice is kind of a, uh, say that you have to call yourself, I am a meditator, okay, I have to uh, go uh, away from others and I have to find a very sophisticated place and all these things. This is it's good if you have all this uh, sort of good uh, conducive environment. On the other hand, if you simply try to just be with yourself, Rather than as I, as I begin in the whole session, I have mentioned that typically we are in the dream world, either in the past or in the future. This is, so both extremes are in a, some sort of a, like a dream. So we have to come out of this dream and to live in the present moment. And so this living in the present moment, we can start. Time to time, you are grounding yourself. So rather than allowing the mind to take us for a ride, so again and again, we are coming back to the present moment. I am just sitting right now. I am just listening right now. I am, I am not dreaming right now. I am just uh, going through some pain right now. I am now, right now, uh, say I am happy. So, so you are developing this kind of a perspective so that you are slowly, slowly coming out of the dream. You start to live. So now you start to uh, feel some sort of a change in your life. It is not that you are being driven by some sort of a defilement, rather you are coming out of this uh, sort of egg, sort of this uh, dream, and now you have a different approach to your life. So this is kind of an eye-opening, because we are being driven so far. We are being simply a kind of victim of someone else's agenda. Now we are trying to come out of this whole scenario, and we are now slowly feeling the whole thing. It may not be extremely pleasurable, but still something we are taking the whole thing to our hand. It's like taking the whole control to the manual mode rather than allowing into autopilot 
which is someone else, according to someone else's agenda according to someone else's uh, wish now we are taking into the manual mode okay now i know right now i am sitting now i know i am simply listening now i know i am walking now i am no i am sleeping so this is kind of the beginning where buddha is mentioning like the postures you know buddha very beautifully starts with very basic practice because we have main four postures that is a standing posture lying down posture walking posture and the sitting posture so if we simply know these posture one by one after the other so that is kind of an eye opening when you are sitting simply come back to yourself come back to the body and you recognize okay my foot is touching in one way my buttocks are touching the chair i have the straight back so my hands may be on one shape i have sort of a pyramid shape or to the whole body so you recognize this whole body in a particular manner so this is the sitting posture on the other hand say you are walking okay my foot is touching oh, sorry changing or moving in a particular pattern my body following in a, another way my hands are just swaying so likewise now you recognize the uh, the walking posture similarly slowly slowly you are recognizing different different postures at this very moment slowly now you are coming out of that dream and start to live in this posture the present moment but recognizing the posture how the posture of the body so the body is actually living in the present moment so that is the key thing here even though mentally we may be uh, ruminating about the past and the future our body is constantly living in the present moment so we are using this body as an anchoring point to the mind to come back to the present moment so i therefore uh, sort of uh, uh, encourage to begin with that kind of a very simple practice we are slowly whenever the body is in a particular posture you recognize okay i am now sitting the body is sitting okay now the body is standing now the body is lying down now the body is uh, say moving so likewise slowly slowly you are recognizing the body recognizing the various postures and slowly then you can uh, sort of uh, uh, fine tune your practice to various other components which may be more refined thank you vante vante do you think uh, uh, going forward uh, at some point uh, we should uh, try that out as well maybe uh, thing uh, guided by vante so that uh, we try it out a bit and then uh, afterwards uh, come up with our q and a's and other any thing that we want to talk is that a good idea i don't know maybe we need to ask uh, the forum as well yeah, yeah. so i mean that, that's what actually what we do in the typical uh, uh, retreat environment so they continue their practice and they are supposed to honestly write their experiences and if they can uh, sort of uh, report their experiences so that we all can share yeah. and so the others also get encourage and again if there is no if there is a necessity of giving any advice then we can help so that is good idea so if you can practice and if you can uh, put any kind of such practice related question to the forum that's also encouraged so maybe um, next time uh... we allocate uh, at least uh, 15 20 minutes for a uh, guided sitting that might be uh, that might give the um, first taste of mindfulness to some of us and also for everybody who's done mindfulness a good uh, use of uh, that time as well ah oh, what you mean yeah what you mean is to incorporate uh, guided sitting to this forum Uh, maybe i was just uh, suggesting maybe chatu chatu is the one who holds the forum that's chatu uh, you might have to uh, check with others uh, with a guided one a small one would do maybe later on uh, if we clarify more or less uh, our questions just a suggestion only yeah it's not a bad idea um and we can always pull together some questions as well i think we can probably do both to some extent we have a lot of time mm-hmm. yeah chatus now can we give uh if someone doesn't want to 
ask the question, can they uh, write it down and send it to uh, to you or, or maybe Badra or, or uh, mm -hmm. Chamilakka so that they can compile the questions yeah. and, and ask in the forum? Is that possible? Yeah, that's possible as well. <clears throat> we have that uh, email specifically created to distribute the invitation uh, that we call this uh, forum uh, mindfulness for young adults and the email address is the same. So if you send that, uh, Badra and Dio and your first can compile it and forward it to Bante. So uh, that we will use exclusively for this forum so that we know that uh, this is coming for Bante. So that can be done immediately. And again, uh, Suranga has introduced Canvas for Satipasana. Probably that's another option where you can incorporate such method here as well, if necessary, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But going forward, Mother, that might be a good idea. So that uh, we put a, we put a uh, board, discussion board, or uh, we have a blog where anybody can uh, even, uh, uh, they can do anonymously, uh, uh, put their feedback and comment and any questions to be asked next time. So we'll try to bring in a, a discussion board uh, into this forum as well, so that, uh, we can give anything in writing. So anytime you want, you can put a feedback or a question and then we can uh, collate them and everybody can see that. So uh, uh, Bante can see it as well. And then uh, those questions can be answered. We've used that in Satipasala with the kids quite effectively and they immediately get engaged and they give their feedback. So it's kind of a free form of writing rather than any structure. Yeah. So since today is the first day, I think uh, other than the familiar faces, only that uh, someone from uh, Melbourne only uh, contributed, but I encourage others also to participate. So I feel uh, then only we can uh, sort of uh, make some sort of a progress in this whole forum and I encourage you to ask questions. So there are uh, sort of uh, mostly I encourage to practice and ask your own questions. So that is the must, uh, that is the most beneficial. But on the other hand, if you have any other question related to the Dhamma, as much as possible, we can answer because knowing the Buddha's teaching, clarifying any doubts actually really help us to, uh, navigate the whole path and uh, it is really interesting because uh, you now now we definitely will understand we all may understand that uh, the typical uh, pleasures the typical sensual pleasures and the whole physical uh, world can't give any guarantee about the about things how things are going to happen it's extremely vulnerable extremely uncertain how things are happen so on such vulnerable situation, Buddha's teaching is really valid, giving us a kind of a encouragement so that to understand how vulnerable, how uncertain all these uh, situations are and how important for us to have a different alternative to our lives rather than simply being a, a stereotype to the typical uh, sense pleasures having a kind of an alternative path, kind of a spiritual path is something encouraging, something empowering ourselves. So that is very uh, valid and sort of giving some prominence. Like today, the whole world is going through some uh, situation, some difficult situation. If someone is already having this kind of a spiritual strength, then it becomes a kind of a added value to oneself, added refuge to oneself because one can be resilient to the whole process and one can endure all these hardships. Um, if we don't have any more questions, um, are we okay to close then? So probably yeah. before we conclude, if, uh, if someone got any comment or any, any suggestions or any feedback, uh, uh to make this more productive or something like that uh, we would welcome if anyone can give a feedback or something we got about 
20 participants there. My suggestion was that we uh, look into having a guided uh, uh, sitting, which is uh, mindfulness on our posture, wherever we are, as we do. I know uh, Swami Nguyen says uh, guided uh, uh, sessions are quite uh, uh, attractive, and I've seen a lot of good comments. So maybe we can introduce that uh, here a bit so that we all get a taste of uh, being mindfulness, being mindful on our posture. Uh, guidance from so I know and say that might be a good experience for all. So that's one suggestion I would like to make here going forward. And I saw there's a little chat uh, coming from I think Lakshmi uh, telling uh, can we also use chat to ask written questions in the discussion. I think that is also possible. I think the uh, Chamila can uh, look at what are the available chat chat and uh, accordingly she can present those yeah that's possible yeah yeah sorry. yes so there's that email address as well uh, on the chat uh, where you can uh, send anything we'll forward it to some answer and so we'll use this uh, chat window to post any questions as well and uh, anything else uh, if you want to uh, uh, say uh, give feedback, you can use that email and we will send it across to Sarnas. Yeah, I had a few, uh, I'm not sure if the other participants had the issues, but um, there was just in the last 15-20 uh, minutes, there was a bit of uh, staggering with the reception. Was that, uh, I'm just wondering, is that just myself or? Uh there was a little bit, but right even right now, I'm just seeing that uh, it's showing me that there's network bandwidth is low at your end. I don't know. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, that's but fine. Uh, when Swami Nuhasi was speaking also, there's a few times that uh, that came up. Okay, that was on my end, yeah? Now it is uh, showing as, a, as a, your, uh, it says uh, your network bandwidth is low. But oh, we okay, did, no. but that is now. But but uh, when Swami Nwaz was speaking, there was a few times that uh, the screen kind of uh, froze for a few seconds. So yeah, that that did happen. Um, that does happen uh, a bit. We have noticed with the other sessions as well. I think it's uh, due to everybody being at home and uh, on the weekends. They're probably on. Uh, no. On the internet is having a bit of a load, yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine, thanks. So if someone uh, loses the internet connection, can they come back uh, afterwards and uh, dial back? Yeah, they can, and then I, I can see them being in the... Um, uh, waiting room and I'll just admit them back in. So if they lose it and they, you know, get disconnected from the call, they can come back in and uh, they can come, get back into the uh, discussion. Yeah. And is there a limitation that everybody is uh, switching off the video or can everybody switch on the video without an issue? I don't think there is a limitation, right? If somebody is joining, they can still switch on their video. Yes, uh, the video, actually, there's no uh, restriction because I think it's to do with privacy and everything. So I cannot uh, just switch on everybody's video. So even though I press the button, then uh, they get a message saying, do you want to turn on your video? And then you turn it on. Uh, but the mics, I can mute everybody and I can turn everybody on. But uh, videos is a it's kind of, it's a personal thing. So if you want to have your videos off, I think uh, we can't uh, say that everybody That's needs fine. to have them, but we uh, kind of encourage so that it's, uh, it just actually at least gives the sense of people being in a group discussion. Yeah. So now we'll do the closing remarks now. Or? So if there's no any, any further comments or any feedback, uh, probably we can conclude the session today. Um, 
I think uh, we have almost uh, gone one more than one and a half hours. Yes, Bante. Yes, it's a it's good too- beginning. Uh, and uh, in anyway, I mean, I only heard the familiar voices. <laughs> Nothing to worry, but I mean, it's interesting, and uh, we can continue. Yes. Yeah, so um, I hope uh, we all have gained uh, very valuable guidance from uh, Venerable uh, Chandra Tanatero as well as uh, Lokuswami Nase as well at the beginning. So I guess uh, this could be the starting step for a long mindfulness journey for all of us, all of uh, all of the young adults. <laughs> so um, not you, uh, Surangaya. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so young anymore. I know. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. So, um, first, I would like to thank uh, uh, Venerable Chandra Tanathero uh, for offering us uh, your valuable time um, and guiding us throughout the session and uh, sharing your wonderful insight and experience with us. And I truly believe that uh, this level of insight and experience in the subject of mindfulness practice is, is not. Uh, not uh, so common. It's very rare to find uh, in, in anywhere in the world, I guess. So we all are so lucky to have you in this session. So thank you very much, Bante. Um, also, I would like to thank uh, Venerable, uh, most Venerable Dhammajiva Thero as well uh, at the beginning for the inauguration and uh, and Venerable Sunandananda, Sunandananda Thero for spending all your time and giving us the technical support from Nisarana one end. Um, and uh, I need to specially thank Badra Aunty. Uh, so without you, you know, none of these things gonna happen. Uh, so you know that uh, about, I think 14 years back, you've taken the initiative to invite Lokuswami Nuhansi to Australia for the first time and then you know, that step has now come a very long way. So, so many people are benefited actually uh, uh, with that, uh, um, what do you call, uh, uh, Dhamma Duda service started from that point. So, we all are so grateful and appreciate that uh, the, the legendary step that you've taken. Um, and now today you've taken another step to initiate this mindfulness program for young adults. So I wish uh, this program will also be another success story and uh, would help uh, spreading this wonderful insight of mindfulness through generations, I would say. So thank you very much and much merits to you, Badra Aunty, uh, for your leadership and support throughout all these years. And uh, I also like to thank Surangaya and Chamilakka and Chatu Malli and uh, you guys are always doing amazing jobs. Uh, I know Surangai and Chamilakka is, is working so tirelessly uh, for Satipasar sessions and many other stuff. So thank you very much, uh, Surangai, Chamilakka and Chatu Malli. And finally, um, all these uh, uh, participants, uh, I think uh, you gained something out of today's session and I uh, hope you would continue to do uh, practice and uh, uh, continue to learn from these sessions. And uh, I think uh, you would see real results when you practice frequently over and over. So uh, that interest is very important to keep practicing. So, uh, so they say sometimes, you know, practice make you perfect. So keep practicing and I wish uh, you all the best uh, in your practice. So before we conclude the session, um, are we talking about uh, the next one? Um, how we gonna do, how frequent, uh, how often we gonna do the forum? Surangaya, do you have any, any suggestion? Or Badrant, you can uh, contribute in terms of uh, frequency. Are we doing weekly or fortnightly or, or, or monthly or any suggestion? Maybe Savinos is preference. Uh... Is it uh, fortnightly or Badra, do you have any suggestion? Uh, as it fits for Bante. Yeah, actually, uh, at the moment, because of the curfew, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I am quite free. So we can continue even weekly, 
or in uh, fortnight and uh, it's up to you i think weekly would be better wouldn't it suranga just to keep in touch right. yes okay we'll uh, do weekly as uh, bante said uh, since bante is uh, these days we will take maximum advantage out of it <laughs> and then, uh, we'll uh, set this up uh, weekly um so that uh, we can uh, start uh, practice and then uh, later on we'll see when things started uh, becoming normally and when we get involved with other things we uh, we can go into a fortnightly one but hopefully by that time uh, most of us will get a good benefit out of this uh, initiation so we'll uh, meet up uh, next week uh, we'll set up the uh, uh conference uh, zoom conference next week as well and then uh, shall send across agenda um on any other changes that we are doing if we are introducing any guided posture or guided sitting mindfulness initially we will uh, check with bante and then uh, set it up as an agenda and send it across to you um anything else uh, chatu or aunty to add before we conclude No, there's nothing for me. But it was a very good session. Thank you. I'm right too. Okay. Okay then. Thank you very much, and uh, I wish you all the best in your practice and blessings of the noble triple gems. Thirvan Saranai.